Welcome to the Journal.ie's debate room, where today we're debating the topic of supervised injecting centres for drug users. A new laws to set up a pilot centre in Dublin, a supervised injection facility, to use the legal term, have been making their way through the Oireachtas and are being debated in the Shannon this week. Joining us to debate the topic are Dr. Garrett McGovern, a specialist in addiction medicine who has clinics in Dublin City Centre, and Adrian Cummins, the head of the Restaurants Association of Ireland. We're discussing the location of the centre this morning. The proposal is to locate it in Dublin City Centre and its backers argue it needs to be in a central location if it's to have its desired effect. Groups, including Adrian's, have argued against a central site. So let's get some opening statements uh, first, and thanks for joining us uh, for the debate today. Um, so around one minute each, um, uh, Adrian, uh, why should these centres not be placed uh, in the city centre? We believe that these centres shouldn't be placed in the city centre because it uh, decriminalises uh, drug um, the sale of, uh, of drugs in the city centre, uh, the Gardaí, uh, uh, having spoken to them, are opposed to it. Uh, we believe that uh, this uh, proposal to have a concentration of, uh, of drug inje injection treatment centres in the city centre is bad uh, for the city itself. It should be brought out into the communities, out into the areas where drug addicts live themselves, as opposed to bringing them all into one concentrated area. Uh, one of the proposed centres backs onto a national school and we have looked at the bill in detail and we think there's a lot of flaws within the bill itself uh, with regard to how the, the operation of the centre and how they actually the Gardaí can, are going to uh, be able to enforce uh, the law of the land as, a, as it is in Ireland. Uh, Gareth, are we decriminalising drugs in the city centre? Why do these clinics need well, to be I, in a central I, I, location? I'd rather hope we would decriminalise drugs in the city centre, but that's another argument for another day. Um, <clears throat> we're not decriminalising drugs in the city centre, we're decriminalising drugs. Is it, we have to uh, cater within the law so that the people who come into these centres aren't criminalised and uh, prosecuted when they use drugs. Uh, and why do they need to be in the city centre rather than the suburbs? Well, I think they need to be in the city centre because um, the large congregation of drug users who do come to the city centre, and they come anyway, there isn't a drug uh, injecting centre in the city centre as it exists, so they do come to the city centre, they come to the city centre to buy drugs. Many of them don't live in the city centre or close by, so when they b buy drugs, they usually inject drugs quickly after purchase. Oftentimes there isn't a convenient place to inject those drugs, and if you look at any of the pictures, images, videos that you see online um, of uh, drug using paraphernalia in the streets, that's a reflection of um, a lack of safe facilities for people to inject and, and, and only recently, about two weeks ago, literally 200 yards from here where I was going to a clinic, I saw two people injecting in a sort of a uh, derelict area um, and all the works were left on the, on the ground afterwards and I've seen kids playing in those areas so it's a danger and we really need to improve that. Um, Adrian, if this centre uh, wasn't located in Dublin City Centre, and uh, just to stress to our our viewers that we're talking about Dublin City Centre because the legislation will set up a, a pilot centre and it will be in Dublin uh, is the plan. Uh, but if it wasn't in the city centre, you say it should be out in the suburbs. Would you like to say what suburbs? And uh, if it wasn't a centre, how would they be administered? How would the, the drugs be injected? Well, obviously, uh, when we looked at this piece of legislation, we, we first of all, we need to talk to the Gardaí and get their points of view with regard to how this can be implemented and uphold the, the law of the land. By uh, concentrating a, a drug treatment centre in, in, in a city centre, uh, brings all your your users into one specific area whereas if you bring it out into the areas where the addicts live you're diluting the concentration as opposed to one uh, specific area um, we are obviously uh, our our coalition of of, of, of um, organizations that are opposed to the the uh, designation of a, of a drug injection tr treatment center in the city in the city center uh, we want more resources for drug treatment in the, in the country we think there isn't enough but by uh, and drug treatment is a big business in Ireland, uh, not just for those that, uh, that uh, deal in it, but also in the treatment of it also. So there is a lot of, at stake at the moment, and those organisations that are looking for to be the pilot will be receiving a lot of money from the state to provide this service. But we need a clarity on a number of, of, of different issues. First of all, the Minister for Education has stated that this uh, a drug treatment, uh, injection treatment centre will not be near a school. How far from a school will it be? 
So we need clarity on that. Um, so that rules out one of the uh, one of the locations that has been proposed at the moment. Uh, then, if uh, we also need to know is what is going to be the concentration of addicts coming into the into this centre? Will it be a hundred? Will it be a thousand? We need to know what is the le the volume coming into the centre. And the other, the second location is right bang in the middle of the shopping district in in Dublin Dublin One, uh, which has been proposed near Arnott's. So they are the two main major front runners for this location at the moment and the third location is on Baggett Street. So they're the three locations that are being proposed for this. So we need clarity, assure, assure, assurity that these are, are going to be dealt with by the Department of Health and also that the Gardaí are going to be uh, brought into the debate uh, also and how this is going to be policed. Okay, Gar, uh, just following up on that, can you say something about those three sites that Adrian mentioned? How likely or unlikely are any of those three sites, or, or, or all of them? And can you comment on the, the, what people call the honeypot effect? Um, the effect some people have, uh, some people say that these centres have of drawing people from the suburbs, from the outskirts of the city, into the city centre. Looking at international uh, experience, is that something that happens? I have absolutely no information on the location of these. I know it will be a city centre location, but I have absolutely no idea. Baggett Street, uh, Adrian mentions, it's completely new to me. Um, I, I don't know the actual location where they'd be. The issue about near a school, I think, is a little bit of a red herring. I mean, I work in a number of treatment centres that are right beside schools. The inference that they're coming in to, you know, see a doctor for a healthcare facility and that this is in some way going to, uh, um, you know, be uh, a danger to children, really, th these are safe centres run by very qualified people. These are not places that are, to, to, to quote the phrase, are going to be honeypots. I mean, if they're going to be honeypots for anyone, and I hope they are, they're for the people who need them, the people who are opiate dependent, heroin addicted, the people who are at risk of overdose have probably already had many, many overdoses, and they're in a safe environment. And what we really want to do, and I want to be very clear on this, we want to attract more of these people into treatment and this is an excellent way of getting them into treatment because a lot of the people who need to use these services, things are quite dire for them. A lot of them are not in receipt of good treatment and Adrian's absolutely right, we do need to invest in treatment services. There, are, there, there is a lack of them, particularly outside Dublin. And there are many people coming from outside Dublin into the city centre of Dublin to buy drugs and inject. So I would not look at it as, as a honeypot for people other than people who are heroin dependent. Uh, Adrian, you've uh, said in the last few months that uh, the uh, drugs should be administered by GPs. Is that correct? Is that something you're still proposing? Well, I think uh, we should look at all options at the moment, and we want to de decentralise out this project out into the suburbs, into the areas where the addicts live uh, live in the community, as opposed to, as I said already, in, into a concentration in the city centre. But uh, there would be addicts who live in the city centre as well. Uh, obviously, but if you bring them all, if you bring hundreds, if not thousands that are coming into the city centre on a daily basis, you know, you have a honeypot uh, scenario where the dealers will be rubbing their hands and say, listen, that's the location, let's go to, the, to that location to deal in advance of the addict going into the centre itself. So you can see it already that you can see uh, deals being done on the streets bef uh, outside of these existing treatment centres already uh, and uh, nothing has been done to clamp down on it. Will there be an exclusion zone around it as, been pro as has been proposed already that the Gardaí not, cannot enforce the law outside with, with the, uh, I think it's 300 metres uh, either way of the uh, injection treatment centre. So we need to trash all of this out and and I, for one, would be 100% opposed to having a drug injection treatment centre located right beside a national school. I, for one, and that's, that's, that's our, my view on it, uh, but I think we need to think this process through uh, before we start to say we, we want to have this in Dublin. Okay, Gar, could you address that, that point that Adrian made about drugs being administered by GPs, for starters? And also, I, I mean, th th there are some legitimate points uh, to do with policing in the immediate area of the centres. This sort of thing needs to be ironed out. Is that going to be addressed in the bill? Is that what's happening at the moment? Yeah, well, um, I'm not entirely sure what's going to be addressed in the bill. I mean, I... I a last minute, a minute addition to coming down here this morning, so um, I'm not entirely sure if, if, I, if I'm honest. Um, uh, because in, it's in the Shannon today, so you've some input yeah, there. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, in relation to your your other point about um, you know policing and, and so I, I, all I can tell you is that there are somewhere in the region of a hundred of these centres worldwide in 66 cities, in um, in, in, in nine countries around the world. <coughs> 
And if you look at the review, and there's a large one done in 2014, they have shown to be very, very effective. And I can understand people being very sceptical, people uh, being non-believers of, of this, but we, we do have an injecting culture in Dublin, in the city centre of Dublin, and we need to improve that. And, there, and, and believe you me, yes, we need more treatment services. To be honest with you, in Dublin we have a lot of treatment services, so it, it kind of worries me that there are people receiving treatment begs the question, what's the quality of the treatment they're receiving, that they're still injecting drugs. But we, we, we need this in an area that is going to be central to where this is taking place. Drug dealing does occur in the suburbs, but I work in community, uh, in community projects um, in places like Tala, and um, they, they have needle exchange services out there. People come in, they're given sharps boxes. You, you don't go walk around Tala and see lots of needles and stuff lying around the place. And the real worry is that if you put this peripherally, that really it will not be used. The need for it will be much less, that's my view. How many people are injecting drugs in Dublin? Um, well, it's estimated that, we, we don't know because we, we don't have exact prevalence figures, but I mean, there are 10,000 patients, uh, people on methadone. It's probably estimated there are at least another 10,000 who are also heroin dependent. Um, if you look at the, the divide, anything up to half of them could be injecting. Some of them are injecting and smoking. So you're talking about, you know, in Dublin, there could be a few thousand people injecting who are not in receipt of treatment. Uh, Adrian, mm. could I ask you um, about um, antisocial behaviour? Uh, the, the statement you put out a few weeks ago with um, your, uh, your colleagues in this campaign, the Temple Bar Company and the Licensed Vintners Association, uh, you said that uh, a catering premises can be closed and footer guard the complaints if antisocial incidents have been filed via the district court. Uh, you said there'll be, there'll be no such sanctions against the operator of a licensed heroin consumption room. Uh, I'm quoting from your, your, your joint statement here, which begs the question, how can there be greater restrictions on the vendor of a chip shop or a local spa? So uh, in that uh, statement, are you suggesting people should be thrown out of a centre like this in the event of a violent act? Or are you just suggesting that um, it could lead to an increase in antisocial incidents in that, in that area? Well, what we want is a level playing pitch, and we want the law of the land to be implemented across for all, every citizen of this country, not just for one cohort and another cohort of citizens can get away scot-free. Mm -hmm. So, which goes back to my original point, the Department of Justice and the Gardaí needs to be consulted on this bill in detail and how this can be implemented in a practical way uh, in the city centre. And when you talk to the Gardaí, it is flawed. And it needs, those, those flaws need, need to be taken out. And going from the figures that has been just said with regard to 5,000 potential uh, addicts that are injecting in the city centre, can you imagine if 1,000 of those come into one injection uh, treatment centre in the city centre every day uh, of the week, you will have uh, drug pushers from all over the city coming in to deal uh, specifically in this location, and you will have carnage. And that's what is going to happen. What we are uh, support, um, proposing, as, as I said already, that this has to be decent, decentralised out into the communities where the addicts are and give the resources to the local GPs, to the local treatment centres in those areas, as opposed to having a concentration or a mecca for, uh, for addicts and for, for drug pushers in, the, in, in uh, Dublin city centre. We see it already where you have uh, certain drug treatment centres that are stretched to capacity and are nearly doing a 24-hour service at the moment. And that is not good for the fabric of our city. And we need to deal with that. And we need to have resources that is put out into the communities, but not a concentration. And finally, as I said already, this is big business. This is big business for the drug treatment organisations. And uh, there is a lot of money at stake here. And we need to flesh this out and know exactly what's happening. Just on the, on the subject of the, of the anti-social incidents, are you proposing that they be dealt with, if there's a violent incident in, a, in one of these facilities, would it be dealt with in, in the same way that if there was a violent incident in a licensed premises in a pub, or would it be dealt with in the same way as if there was a violent incident in, say, a hospital or a clinic? Well, obviously, if, a, if there's, it depends on the, on the type of violent in incident. If there's a stabbing or if there's a, um, aggressive behaviour or if there's uh, somebody that's received um, 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 injuries, uh, obviously that's a criminal matter, and uh, the 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 guardian needs to be needs to be, uh, needs to be brought into into the equation. And having spoken to the guardian with regard to this, and uh, there is loopholes within this piece of piece of legislation. And I repeat again, the guardian and the Department of Justice needs to be brought into how this is going to be rolled out. Okay, Gareth, what's your view on law enforcement and how antisocial incidents should be dealt with in these places? 
Look, I work in clinics and uh, we have incidents in clinics from time to time. Um, the, the running of the centre is often very crucial to how people are treated and if they're treated with respect you'll get it back a hundredfold. Um, if we have an island incident in a clinic and sometimes we have some very serious incidents, it goes down the route of the law the same way as any other violent incidents. There's nothing particular. If, if we feel the person can't be safely treated in that place, they're, they're, they're treated, treated elsewhere. I don't see that really particularly um, uh, 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 as a huge issue. And if you look at the research kind of internationally, that's not what they're saying. Just, can I just make yeah. one point about the GP? Sure. I'd be against GPs, uh, this, this been in the hands of GPs, to be honest with you. There are many, many GPs. There's a big divide about drug treatment generally, about methadone treatment and, and stuff like that. And, you know, this is essentially a, a huge harm reduction service. Um, and I'm not, I, I, I will be, I think if you're going to be involved in this service, you really have to re really believe in harm reduction. And there are some obviously outstanding candidates who already work in the area of needle exchange. I'm thinking of people like Merchants Key and Anna Liffey, who have uh, offered these services for years and years and years. That's where I would like to see the, this, the service uh, in the hands of, it's my own view. What about Adrian's point? This is big business for, uh, for groups working with, uh, with drug users in the city centre. Well, there's grants going around, there's funding. Of course there is, but there's also big savings. I mean, you look at the, the, the research internationally, I mean, there's huge savings to keep somebody out of casualty. I mean, I don't think people realise how much it costs for people who are sharing injecting equipment who develop HIV, needed treatment. Casualties every single night are flooded with people who are suffering the consequences of injecting drug use. This is going to cost, make huge, huge savings in the long run. Okay, just a, a final question now for both of you. Uh, we're obviously not going to settle this today. Uh, it's before the Shannon, then it has to go through the whole legislative process and people will have their input. Uh, but Garrett, you're part of the, of the campaign to, to bring in these centres now. Uh, Adrian, you're obviously campaigning against having them in a the central location and in the way they're being administered. Uh, Garrett, how can... Uh, you work with groups like Adrian's and groups like the Vintners in the next couple of months uh, to, to make sure that this, this comes in? Well, I think we all have to work together. I mean, if the, the, the bill has gone through and this is going to happen and it, and it is going to be centrally located, I, 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 we, we have to work together. We want, this, we want this to work. This is going to be a pilot, remember, and that pilot is going to have to be effective. So if the, 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 it's very, very crucial that we hit the ground running and this works from the word go. And if it works, I don't think anybody, even the detractors, will, 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 the, the, will, will be in favour of these. And that's what has happened internationally. People who traditionally were against them have said, hold on, this has actually improved the area. I think, you know, the, the, the visibility of drug use is much, much less. Okay, and what would you like to hear from the groups working in the city centre in the next couple of months, Adrian? Well, obviously, we want to work with all partners with regard to this, and we want the Department of Health to come to the table and go and talk to us. They've uh, failed to do so uh, to date uh, and allay our fears of how this is going to be rolled out. Uh, we definitely want to make sure that these uh, these proposed drug injection treatment centres uh, will have um, have a criteria. Uh, we want to know, will they be actually located beside uh, national schools or schools within this country uh, and how, what is the distance away from it? We also want the Gardaí and the Department of Justice involved in this uh, piece of legislation to make sure that it, it can be implemented as per the law of the land. Uh, to date, it can't from what we can see. And also, I would like to see the Irish College of General Practitioners involved also and getting their views on it and the wider um, uh, medical community uh, so that before we pass a piece of legislation that may be flawed and uh, that we make sure that we have ticked all the boxes that we've consulted everybody and that we are all on the same road together to make sure that we have a better society for the people of Ireland. Okay, uh, Garrett, I just noticed you were, you, you were nodding there at a couple of points. What were you agreeing with and what were you disagreeing with? Well, I, I'm very encouraged. I mean, I agree with Adrian. I mean, I, I don't think we, we should be fighting about this. I mean, we all want Dublin City to look better. We want to be attractive to uh, its patrons, I suppose, and to tourists. And we do need to work together. Yeah, consultation, absolutely important. Not convinced. It's my own view about uh, the Irish College of General Practitioners. I'd, I'd have a quibble about that. I'm, I'm not sure they have the expertise to deal with this particular area. This really needs a service that is absolutely uh, are at the coalface every day, and the I Irish College of General Practitioners are not. Okay. Uh, I gave Adrian the first word. I'll let you have the last one. So, Dr. Garrett McGovern, uh, Adrian Cummins at the Restaurants Association of Ireland, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you.